And we're back. Another Falcons franchise. Week 18. Very important. We are in a win and in situation. You know, if we win our game against the 3 and 13 Los Angeles Chargers, we're in the playoffs. Sounds easy, right? But there's there's trap games all around. We're currently the number six seed going into this game. A huge weight on our shoulders. As the Cowboys, they've already clinched the first round by, so they're good. Packers have already clinched a playoff spot. They've clinched their division, so they're more than likely. They could realistically drop to the fourth seed, I guess. But then you have the Seahawks at three, the Buccaneers at four, the Panthers at five, the Falcons, us, at six, and the Cardinals at seven. And then with the Vikings, Rams, 49ers, and Bears, all with the same record, all can easily make the playoffs. Well, maybe not easily, but all have a chance to make the playoffs. So we have some weekly awards to go over. John Kaminsky, very great game, trying to make a case for us to re-sign him. This may be a... Uh, well, we're going to negotiate with players regardless, but we are going to wait until after the game because I don't know if it does or not, but us making or missing the playoffs could potentially factor in if a player wants to re-sign with us. Okay, we were able to get that done. All right. And we also got a, a cold opponent. We have no fear, I'd say. We have to avoid the trap game. That is our main issue. I agree. But we're just going to hop straight into it. We have our weekly strategy, of course. I believe it's also possible we could still win our division as well. So that is interesting. Uh, Chargers, not doing very solid. They're doing well in uh, turnovers. They, you know, they not, they're not having any turnovers. They are doing okay in the passing game, so I am going to defend the medium pass. And they are horrible defensively, it feels like. But we're just going to... We're going to have a little blitz counter. And we're just going to hop straight into it. Any injuries? Hopefully not. We want to be as healthy as we possibly can for this game or else, you know. Those players that we've come to love could potentially cost us a spot in the playoffs. And we are completely healthy. We are going into this game with, I believe, no injuries. We do have some players to upgrade first, though. We have Enrique Peoples. And we're just going to look at our roster. Injury report. Do we have any injuries that I should note? We do not. Do the Chargers have anyone? They are missing Rashawn Slater and Nate Pitts. Now, Nate Pitts, I don't know how big of a factor that's going to be, but Rashawn Slater is going to be a huge factor for us. Hopefully, you know, like Jalen Phillips and John Kaminsky. Keandre Jones. Players like that can hopefully capitalize on that. And their center, I don't know if that's their starter or not, but we'll take a look at it anyway. We go over to Falcons. Or not Falcons, uh, Chargers. Excuse me. We go to center. Okay, Corey Lindsley is their starting center, so they're not missing a huge guy. That guy's just backup. But if Corey Lindsley does get injured, that is going to be a huge well. We're going to take a look at the Week 18 schedule. We already know the Panthers and Bucks. They're fighting for playoff spots. Hopefully it says uh, records. Does it? It doesn't. Well, it does, actually. If we just sit here. Uh, as you can see, Dallas is playing Philadelphia. Dallas doesn't have anything to play for. They can sit their starters. Philadelphia can't make the playoffs, so there's no real point. Uh... The Packers are playing the Colts. Both of them are 11 and 5. Huge game for the Packers, as they could potentially clinch the number two. See with a win here. The Cardinals they are playing the 8 and 8 Broncos. That is going to be a struggle for them, as that is a very similar record. They are probably the the dark horse to make the playoffs. They have a very outside shot. The uh, Bears and Rams they are playing each other. One of those teams, no matter what, is going to be eliminated as soon as that game ends. 
uh, the Seahawks and the 49ers. More than likely with them as well. One of those teams are more than likely going to be eliminated from the playoffs. No matter what happens as soon as that game ends. The Vikings are playing the Lions. The Vikings, they are a winning in team. Now, it's always hard to predict those division matchups. So we have to be careful. You know, they could fall to the trap game. Especially against a division rival. Because obviously division rivals know their team way better than other teams. And then, finally... I'd assume out of all the playoff teams in the NFC, we have the Buccaneers and Panthers playing each other. Now, more than likely, both teams will make the playoffs. I mean, it's going to be very hard for them not to make it, I believe. But, winner of that game does win the division. Unfortunately, we cannot. I believe there is a chance if they... No, I don't even think if they tie. So, we cannot win the division, unfortunately. But, they have a lot to play for. Because, one, that's going to be a home game. At least one. Because we don't know how... Uh, it's going to play out. You know, all it takes is the Bucks or the Panthers get the four seed. And at the moment, these two teams would play each other in the playoffs as well. That's convenient. Uh, and uh, five, say Bucks get the four seed, Cowboys get the one seed. If the seven seed and the six seed wins, then the Bucks get an extra home game. And then they get another one if somehow they win and the one seed loses. So you got to always factor in. You always want to do as best as you possibly can because you it's so hard to predict the playoffs. You want to be the highest seed you possibly can. So even the, the four seed can benefit you. Even the five C could. The five C could host a home game, technically. Five C could host two of them, I believe. As Washington, I don't know if they're in the battle for a playoff spot, but they do defeat Tennessee, so that is interesting. As we see Justin Herbert walking out on the field, and I now believe as well if Wa uh, if the Chargers do lose this game. They might already confirm it. I don't know. But they will get the number one pick for sure if they lose with the Washington win. What am I saying? Washington can't make the playoffs. I know they can't. But first and time from their own 21, the Chargers rock in the nice dark blue jerseys. It's a handoff to Eckler. Eckler gets two yards. As Washington passes Tennessee. So Tennessee gets a pretty good draft pick at going 5-11. and 11. Or 5-12 and 12 maybe. What? what? Five more one. As that is complete to Keenan Allen, as that's up to the 27 for a nice gain of four, but that is going to be short of the first round as Dallas does defeat Philadelphia. Dallas, even though they had nothing to play for, they still love beating down their division rivals. An incomplete. That's going to result in a fourth down and four, and the punting unit is going to be out there. As Buffalo defeats Jacksonville, I don't know if Buffalo or Jacksonville are fighting for a playoff spot. Maybe Buffalo, because their division, I know, is pretty lackluster this season. So there's a solid chance that Buffalo could make the playoffs by going 8-9. We don't know. Here's Denario Henson so far. He's had a pretty good start to his uh, career here in Atlanta. Now let's hope he can continue that spark, as we would love to make the playoffs. And off to Gordon, as Gordon's going to fight for it up to the 37 for a gain of 3.5. We're going to say 4 yards up to the 37. We're asking to be a 2nd and 6. Kenneth Murray on the tackle. As Denario Henson, he's going to throw. And dangerous pass, nearly intercepted by number 26. Would that be Asante Samuel Jr.? Intended for Marquise Brown, though. As the Steelers beat the Chiefs, 28-24. I don't know if that's going to put the Steelers in the playoffs or not, but Kyle will not... Oh, but it's Calvin Ridley gets the reception to the 45 for a first down. Jeez, I believe clinched the one seed already, so they didn't really have much to play for in that game. And uh, Patriots beat the Jets, but I now depending on what the Dolphins' record is, the Bills may have actually made the playoffs at eight and nine, because the Patriots finished seven and ten. So it's either the Bills or Dolphins, and the Jets. I don't know what they finished, but I know it was worse than the Patriots. That's all. Awesome. Marquise Brown getting the pass up to the 33-yard line. Great job by him. 
as New Orleans defeats Las Vegas 24-21 to finish out the season 8-8. Eight eight. Or 9-8. Did the Saints tie? Or eight, they finished 8-9. Eight Maybe like the record switch. I thought it said 8-8 eight eight there. As Gordon got a carry, he got 4 yards. Tampa Bay does defeat Carolina 31-14. And Tampa Bay is going to 1, clinch a playoff spot. And 2, clinch the division. Kyle Pitts gets it completed. And he's going to fight all the way up to the 13-yard line. Now here's the question. is Carolina. Carolina is not confirmed to playoff spot, actually. So they might not make the playoffs. Cleveland does get their win. I believe the Browns. I don't know how the Ravens are doing. But the Browns have a better record than the Steelers. Looking to check it down. And there's a penalty. And Derek Gore fighting up to like the... Seven yard line. It's gonna be a rough in the pass or penalty. And of course, gonna accept that. As the Vikings are playing the, uh, we can see all the bottom, you know, all the games. CJ Ham is to the one yard line, just short. Rams and Bears, big game to watch out for. Wesley got the handoff, and he's going to lose a yard after a great breakthrough. And the Bills are going to win their division at 8 and 9. Wow. Third and goal. It's another handoff to C.J. Ham, And C.J. Ham is going to be stopped just short of the first down. Gonna, or the first down, the touchdown line. And in field goal formation, looking like they're just going to take the points. And they are. Interesting choice. When you're on the playoffs, fighting for your a playoff spot, I don't know what's the move. Are you just gonna take the, the, the points, or are you gonna try and get more out of it? Very interesting choice there by uh, the Falcons there to kick the extra or the field goal when they're at the one yard line. Theoretically, they could pass it. They don't get it. Uh, you know, you have the potential of a safety as well. I feel like it, the good outweighs the bad, kind of. So, but interesting choice. So that was a ga gain of six by A. Abraham. We do not know who A. Abraham is, but assuming he's a tight end. And Herbert is going to go down. That is Jalen Phillips. And that's going to be a huge loss. It's going to be a loss of 11, I believe. Herbert now on third and 15. It's going to be a screen pass. And right there to stop is number 26. Who is that? Is that Hampton? That is... he wasn't ready. Who are you, he wasn't Mysterio ready. man? Rashad Fenton. He's 26, really? I thought that would be Saquon Hampton. We're going to back out then after and see who what the numbers are. A great return up to the 49. Not a very good return, but like great field position regardless. As we quickly go over to coaching, we go to depth chart. We scroll up. Free safety. Saquon Hampton's 29. And Jalen Hawkins is 32. Okay, let's remember that from now on. So I don't get them confused. First and 10 now from the 49-yard line. We're about to approach the end of quarter number one. That's a great play by Bosa, I believe, to get off the line so fast. But Henson was able to get away faster. So that's a great game for a first down. That's the end of the quarter. It's going to be a handoff to Gordon. Gordon following the box, and he's going to go up to the 34 for a gain of five. They're going to say four. another handoff to Gordon he's gonna bounce it outside and he's gonna go up to the 32 and that's gonna be a gain of three you can say so now third and three Henson looking throws complete that is Derek Gore up to the 27 keeping the drive alive as there's gonna be an offsides penalty and this is a free play and throwing deep and completing it is Calvin Ridley. And that is going to be a touchdown because of the offside penalty. They took advantage of the free play. Offside. 
And the uh, Falcons lead 9 to nothing with the extra point still to come. And it is good. Falcons lead 10 to nothing. But Addison Nolan once again gets injured. And we might have to replace him as much as I do not want to. I feel like he is great. He is so injury prone. He offers a loss to the team. But at the same time with the amount of time he gets injured. We might just have to get rid of him. Might just have to trade him off somewhere. And hope you know we got good value in return. As Detroit and Minnesota are tied at 7 apiece. As Herbert is going to check it down to the tight end, I believe. And that's going to be tackled at the 24 by number 6. I forget your name. Is that Matthew Hawkins? Or is that the other guy? Oh, I think 6 is Randy Tatum, actually. So that was a great run, by the, I believe. I wasn't really paying attention to that play. As Seattle leads... 14-7 against San Francisco. Green Bay and Indianapolis tied at 7. And complete to the 42. I believe that might be Mike Williams. It is. He gets his first catch of the game for 8 yards. As Eckler. Going up to the 46. Decent game. But he does get the first down as well. <clears throat> Bears lead to Rand 14-0. Barely getting the pass away, and that's going to be a great gain up to the 30 knot. First and 10 now from the 39. Arizona never tied at 7. Looked like it may be a block in the back, but they're not going to call him. We're not going to, you know, make it a big deal. As a gain of 5, they're going to say, by Austin Eckler. Play action. Herbert. Plenty of time. But the pressure is starting to come and he's going to throw it deep in the end zone. And incomplete. Randy Tatum not able to pick it off. Third and five now from the 35 yard line. Herbert. Looking. Throwing. And it's going to be complete but there is a penalty. And it's going to be roughing the passer. On Grady Jarrett, the veteran. That's going to move him all the way up to the 15. An arguably first down may have been short. Wasn't quite paying attention. But that rough in the passer is definitely going to give him the first and way more. As a great run by Eckler get getting four yards, but he is tired as you can see. We're going to give it right back to him. And Eckler has a wide open hole into the end zone. And now Abraham gets injured. And the extra point attempt is good. And the Chargers make this game closer. They now are losing 10-7. Only a field goal game now. As George Claiborne showing some You're fancy ready. footwork. Ready. Isn't going to save your job though, buddy. Henson. Crows. And wide open. That's Ridley. And Ridley might go all the way. And he is. A huge play. By Denario Henson the cabin Ridley. The youngster to the veteran. And after that play, the Falcons lead 17 to 7. I had to make sure they made the kick before I said what they lead by. And a fumble! And it's going to be recovered by number 32. I forget him. Was that Saquon Hampton? Or is that Jalen Hawkins? I believe that's Jalen Hawkins. Should show up in the fumble, uh, in the stats though. Maybe, I don't know, special teams, so maybe not. But a great job 
First and goal now from the 10. Henson just froze the ball away after pressure. And Henson is going to go down. He's going to be sacked. Burning goal now from the 18. Henson looking. Just checks it down to Kyle Pitts. Kind of smart. Avoiding the turnover. But at the same time, you're only going to get a field goal out of it. Thirty-three yard attempt is good, and the Falcons lead twenty to seven. Hoping it doesn't fumble again, but they are going to return it, and not going to fumble. But at the same time, it's going to be stopped at the fourteen yard line. So, really, at what cost? You see, you get the ball, but you're in horrible field position. A minute 46 left to go in the half. You're at your own 14. You're down by 13. You're down a timeout, and the other team has near max momentum. It's going to be very hard to come back. But that's a great start to Mike Williams up to the 31. <coughs> then he got out of bounds, so that stops the clock. Minnesota leads Detroit 14-7 to as well. Chris Horn, our former quarterback. Looking like he might make the playoffs. That pass is going to be incomplete. Second and 10. Seattle still leads San Francisco 14-7 in their battle for the NFC West and a playoff spot. A wobbly pass is incomplete after being hit while he was throwing. It's going to result in incompletion. Now a third and 10. And the last thing you want to do is give the ball back. An Eckler. He's going to be tailed down by John Kaminsky, and that's going to be a timeout by the Falcons there. First Get half. Get him, boys. Get him, boys. Also, Packers are leading the Colts 13 to 7. Watching to return it is George Clay Warren. He's going to get a solid return up to the 32 yard line. Come on now. Let's go. Colts have recently been on a, a dry streak, you know, haven't really been picking up many wins. Henson, he's going to throw deep. And complete to Kyle Pitts across midfield to the 46. And the Rams are being destroyed by the Bears, 24 to nothing. And it looks like the Rams are not going to be joining the Cowboys and whatever other teams, the Packers, I believe, in the playoffs. Henson, he's going to lose a lot of yards, though. Fucking not to throw it away, and he's going to lose 13 yards, and Knox uh, gets a sack, and a timeout by the play. On, on, uh, timeout on the play by Atlanta. They're second of the half with a minute and one remaining. Kyle Pitts does have X-Factor, though. Henson on second and 23, going to need a big play, and incomplete. He was about to get just that if we could hold on to the pass. But now a third and 23, and this might just be a run or a Hail Mary attempt. And it's going to be a run. And Gordon, he's going to fight up to the 48-yard line. And the Chargers are going to elect not to use the timeout. So now the Falcons can chew this clock. And a horrible pump by Jake Bailey. Now the Chargers just need like 10, 15 yards and they can attempt a Hail Mary or two. They get close to that and elect to use the timeout. They now have 8 seconds left. You might see a quick play, you know, either set up a Hail Mary or they might try and take a long field goal attempt. Herbert. With one second left, the Chargers take their final timeout of the half and they're in Hail Mary formation. Final play of the half. Chargers looking to put some points on the board. Herbert, he's going to throw deep after Jalen Phillips pressured him early. And intercepted by A.J. Terrell, and he has a chance to return this back. 
He had the blockers, but he's ultimately not going to. He's going to be tackled at the 43-yard line. And that's going to do it for half number one, where the Falcons lead this game 20-7. to There's the first half stats for those of you who are curious. As we now take a look around the league with our halftime report. Starting off at New Orleans, we have the Raiders and the Saints. Uh, the Saints win that game 24-21. to Porter with a touchdown interception. Camaro with a touchdown. We head over to the Los Angeles now. That is not Los Angeles, but okay. Stafford with an interception. Field with a touchdown. Montgomery with three touchdowns. And Robinson with a touchdown. Cam Akers also with a touchdown. And last, we had the Tampa Bay Florida where we see the Panthers and the Bucks. Where the Bucks win that game 31-14. to Drew Walker, four touchdowns. Sam Darnold four interceptions and Mike Evans getting a touchdown reception as well it's gonna do it for the halftime report and now we head over to our next gen stats where we see the Falcons when it comes down to running the ball inside this game and we head over to the Chargers where we see them when they throw the ball short this game And that's going to do it for the halftime show. Falcons do receive second half kickoff as well, where they lead 20-7. to Kick is underway. It's going to be fielded at the one, maybe two-yard line. Claiborne's going to look to take it outside, and that is going to prove horribly as he only gets to the 18, but he does make a man miss in the process. Kyle Pitts still with his X-Factor activated. Falcons is nearly max momentum as first and 10 from the 18. Denario Henson, high snap. And he's going to be sacked by Joey Bosa. Yeah, that's going to be a loss of 10. And that's going to bring up second and 20 now from the 8-yard line. They have to be careful now. They're in safety territory. As Bosa's going to get off the line again. And Denario Henson just going to throw the ball away. Be smart with it. And that's going to result in incompletion. But it does save them from getting a safety. Given the Chargers an extra 2 points. Now a 3rd and 20. Henson going to throw again. As Bosa is just bullying out there and complete to Derek Gore. He's not going to get the first down, but he is going to get up to 23 for a 4 from 5. Which is going to give the punter a lot more confidence in a, you know, a block punch for safety or a touchdown even. It's good, a good punt and it was fair caught at the 32 yard line by number 6. Johnson. First and 10 now from the 32 yard line. Quick pass is complete to Eckler up to the 35, but Jalen Phillips right there to stop it instantly. Does get three and a half, but they're going to say four yards. And it was a blitz, but well picked up. It's Mike Williams gets completed to the 45 yard line. AJ Terrell had his X Factor activated as well. I'm not sure if he still does. I don't even know if he's on the field right now. It's a handoff to Gordon. Terrell is definitely on the field. And he's going to stop Eckler for a gain of maybe half a yard. We're going to say he got a yard. Second and nine now from the 45-yard line. Herbert looking. Just checks it down to Eckler. Eckler is going to be tackled at the 49, trying to make a man miss. Now a third and three from the 49. It has really been the Austin Eckler show. We've seen a few targets to Keenan Allen. Or not Keenan Allen, excuse me. Uh, Mike Williams. But other than that, we haven't seen him. Pressured, but completing the pass. As John Kaminsky was right in his face. And Fabian Moreau gets the reception. A quick pass as well to Fabian Moreau again. That's up to 27. And Herbert's starting to get in a little... A little, grip, a little, a little groove, a little rhythm. I struggle to say that. As the Vikings lead the Lions 14 to 13, and Grady Jarrett is going to take down Justin Herbert for the sack. That's going to be a loss of I don't know how much, but it's going to be third and 13 now from the 37 yard line. Seattle leads 21 14 against San Francisco. Herbert. There's pressure, and Phillips is going to take him down now at the 47, and Grady Jarrett gets injured holding his wrist. That is not a good injury. It's never good to have an injury, but that is a horrible. 
That's horrible. As the Packers lead 16-7 over to Colts. And a great punt by Presley Harvin. Used to be on our team. He elected to go in a different direction, though. Guess he wanted to... I don't know if I traded him or not, but he's on the Chargers now. That's for damn sure. And intercepted! And that's the turnaround they needed! And he's going to go all the way! A miscommunication, I believe. And Nasir Adderley gets the pick six and an extra point away from it being a six-point game. And the Chargers are now only down six points, 20 to 14 after the miscommunication between Denario Henson. And the Bears lead 31 to 7 over the Rams. The blowout continues in that game. Claiborne makes a man miss, but arguably, well, he does. He loses yards down at the 15. Denver is leading Arizona 14-7. That is not good if you are a Cardinals fan. If we to the 20 for a gain of five, that's Kyle Pitts. And Derek Gore gets the pass up to 27, and that's enough for a first down. Has him through his first career interception with the Falcons as well that game today, just then. And his first pick six. I don't know how he was with the Giants. Don't know if he had any interceptions, but he does now at least. Up to the 43, great game by Kyle Pitts. And it's going to be a handoff to Gordon. Gordon's going to go up to their 44 for a gain of one. They're going to say two. Going to be generous there. For a second and eight. <coughs> <coughs> As Henson almost got blown up by Bosa. And way to go by Melvin Gordon. Fighting against number eight. And he's going to pick up the first down. Fighting forward for that extra yard. Henson just throws it to Derek Gore to the 43 for only for a gain of four. That's going to do it for quarter number three. Third quarter stats there for those of you who are curious. Where the Falcons lead 20 to 14 with the ball at the 43. Henson complete the pits. That's up to the 38. That's going to be about third and two. Third and one and a half, I'd say. This is a 55-yard attempt for Young Hoku if they do not convert. But they do convert as Calvin Ridley gets the pass up to the 30 for a first down and more. We're under seven minutes left to go in the game now. Henson, he's throwing deep and incomplete, but there is a penalty. I'd assume either illegal touching or roughing the passer. And it's illegal touching. Marquise Brown did step out of bounds. Lucky for that, that penalty does not mean anything. It's just a loss of down. It does go in the stat book, though, as a penalty. So. But second and 10 now from the 30. Bosa almost got right off that block, and Henson throwing deep again and complete to Leslie, but not able to stay in bounds. And now a third and ten from the 30. Probably should not throw this here. Probably should just try. They do throw anyway. And that is complete to Marquise Brown up to the 14. I was going to say not to throw it so you avoid, you know, falling out of field goal range. You know, because it is Young Goku. He does struggle from deep. But they do convert to the 14. And Henson completes, and Marquise Brown is going to be down at the one yard line. That's probably best case scenario because that go. does keep the go. clock running as well. Here we go. 352 yards so far this game by the worst ranked offense. And Wesley, he's going to be blown up instantly. He's going to lose two yards. That does keep the clock running, assuming there's no turnover or a missed field goal. 
you have to feel confident if you're a Falcons fan. But a touchdown to Steve Wesley is going to extend their lead. With 5-10 left to go, they're going for two to make it a 14-point game. Henson, quick throw, and that's complete to Kyle Pitts, and the two-point is good. Falcons lead 28-14 with 5-10 left to go in the game. And it looks like the Falcons may be punching their ticket into the postseason. Tackled at the 19-yard line as well. Minnesota leads 21-16. Detroit doing a great job staying in the game. As Echo gets the handoff, he's going to be tackled at the 19. Going nowhere. Second and 10 out from the 19 yard line. That's complete to the 25 yard line for a gain of 7. Now third and 30 from the 25 yard line. Just over four minutes left to go. Clock keeps running. The quick pass is complete to Keenan Allen. Randy Tatum was on the coverage, I believe. Can I get a name, though? I'm afraid that's Matthew Hopkins. I've been calling him Randy Tatum. Well, well it is. We just got coverage. And the 49ers tied the game at 21 against the Seahawks. Yeah, that pass is complete up to the 46. And Herbert's going to go down at the 35. Keandre Jones and someone else combining for a sack. And the Packers lead 24 to 10. And the Bears lead 38-14. And that pass is intercepted, and that's going to more than likely be the dagger. And he's going to go all the way. That is Deion Jones. Don't know why I said it like that. But that's going to be your dagger, ladies and gentlemen. And the Cardinals and Broncos are tied at 21 apiece. We're an extra point away, and it is good. Falcons lead 35-14, 21-point lead with 2.24 left to go in the game. I believe the Cardinals are going to be eliminated from the playoffs because of the Bears win as well. So no matter what happens with the Cardinals, they're going to either have to hope for a miracle or I, my math to be wrong. But I think they're going to be eliminated, even if they win. First and 10 from the 18, Herbert. Feeling pressure and managing to get to him is Jalen Phillips, but he does get to pass away. Herbert avoids being sacked for the fifth time this game. And this Falcons defense really stepped up at the right time. Second and ten. Herbert throwing complete. That's number 16. I believe that might be Jalen Guyton. It is not. I can confirm. Callaway. Can I maybe go Marquez? Marquez Callaway. There you go. I don't really know, but uh, it's a guess. Can blame me for guessing. First and ten now from the 33. Throwing it deep. And great defense by Randy Tatum to knock it away at the last possible second. Herbert. He's froze. And that's complete and getting out of bounds is Mike Williams. That's up to midfield. A minute 45 left to go in the game. Why is there a massive R2 button? Do you guys see that? Well, it disappeared. It was right above, if you want to rewind, uh, right above where the Chargers score is. There was an R2 button. Yeah, it's, it's back again. You see it above the, the uh, LAC. We did 4-2. And C. McKee gets injured. And it's back again. I guess that R2 button is just there to stay. I don't know. And intercepted. That is Randy Tatum. And he's going to go up to the 19-yard line. 
And the Falcons are going to win this game in pure domination. A first down does end it, but I do not believe the Chargers are going to use their timeouts. And anyway, that might be the first down right there. It's Gordon, and it is up to 29. And the Falcons are going to come out of this game with a victory and a playoff spot. And I believe the Chargers are also going to come out of this game with the number one overall pick, though. So, like, don't complain about that. You did the worst, but you also get rewarded with the best pick. And the first pick. I'm assuming you have it, at least. If, I mean, if you don't have it. And the Vikings are going to win 30-16. to And the Vikings have a chance of punching their ticket, depending on, you know, where they rank against, like, the Bears and stuff. We're not going to look at stats. We're just going to hop straight into the postseason. And we're going to see who our opponent is, assuming we make it. I don't know if we make it. But, I mean, we were at 60, so I don't see why we wouldn't make it. Skip to the end. Um, are you going to skip? Okay, thank you. Jalen Phillips, Randy Tatum, Addison Nolan, Austin Jackson, Otto Dekumbo, Ogun Deji. Very key players. All of them. And we do have some recaps to take care of. We come away with the win. It's all we were, It's all we had to do. Win and in. Told you. That music right there is probably got me copyrighted. And I have 40 staff points now, which we'll probably spend at the start of the next episode. Jay, uh, and Grady Jarrett's pumped about that win as well. We're just going to hop straight into the next game where we go to Wild Card Weekend. Where we'll hopefully be participating. And we will. We're going against the 11-6 Seattle Seahawks. If we look at the playoff bracket, we we move up to the five seed. The Vikings do make it at the sixth seed, so Chris Horn does make it into the playoffs. And the Bears round out at the seventh seed, so the Panthers don't even make it. And the Bucks got the free seed as well. We do have a practice squad player signed. Screw you, Packers. You would be signed our practice squad guy right before the playoffs. Tom Parker. What if we wanted him? What if we wanted him to be in the playoffs? Huh? And you just went ahead and signed him. Well, we're just going to get that out of here. We're going to go to free agency. I don't know if we can even sign practice squad players anymore. There is Brandon Humphrey. We'll take him. And there's Brian Flanagan, who's once again a free agent. What the heck's happening with him? Sign both of them, though. As we will go to our roster and see how many practice squad players we can still sign. Grady Jarrett did get injured that game. I did not see anything after the game specializing specifying that he is still injured. So hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully he's here to play. Well, I mean, we could just go to defense and see if he's injured. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. And he is. Grady Jarrett is going to be back. He's getting up there in age. He's only an 86 overall. Ooh. Luckily, he only has one more year, but we're going to be paying him a lot of money that year. But that's okay. I forgot to do negotiations. No. Uh... Am I able to re-sign players? Am I able to re-sign them here? I am. Okay, I want Audit to Kumbo Ogun Deji. That's probably our main guy. And I want Greg Little. We'll also bring him back. And he's happy with the offer as well. And I believe that's probably gonna do it for re-signers. Drew Dahlman, do you wanna do you wanna return? We'll give you a contract. Okay, Drew Dahlman returns. So hopefully, hopefully we have enough for DJ Jones and John Kaminsky, or else we might be in a bit of trouble. But I don't know if that's saves or not, because I don't even know if I'm that's supposed to be there. I feel like that might just be the view. They're not there anymore, so it gives me confidence, you know, that I just re-signed them. But there's our negotiations. We punched our ticket into the playoffs. So we were allowed to negotiate, and now we can negotiate one more time, and that's when we either win the Super Bowl or our own from the playoffs. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. 
in the next episode, we will be playing the 11 and 6 Seattle Seahawks. The number four seed. Saturday at 8:15. So we will know the results of the Bucks game, and we will know the result of the the Bucks the Bucks Vikings game, and we'll know the result of the Browns and Bills game in the AFC. As you can see, the times are underneath. We're going to be the third game of six that's played. So, and we're going to get a nighttime game. Hopefully, we can win. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.